replaced the 1,000 microfarad units with the new ones. The new ones are 1,000 microfarad at 35 volts versus the older ones, which are 25. Again, be sure to observe your polarity on these. Make sure it's correct. And flip the board over and solder them in. And this is silver solder, so these are not cold solder connections, even though they look like it. They're actually electrically superior. Now it's time to replace the five 220 microfarad electrolytics. They're rated at 16 volts and 25 volts respectively. The new units we have are rated at 50 volts. Just like the larger capacitors, just unsolder the back side. Put the new capacitors in place and solder them in. Last items to replace is 22 microfarad electrolytic and the two 4558 op amps. When those op amps fail, which they can, it can cause catastrophic failure of the power supply or loss of regulation. I'm going to replace these with two brand new units and I'm going to solder them in and not use sockets just to maximize the reliability of the circuit. At the bottom is the old op amp. Pin 1 is identified by a small depression or a dot or a notch on the left hand side. If there's a notch on the left hand side then pin 1 is the lower left. The new part above, same identification mark, the, the indented circle. The new part we're using is a Texas Instruments 4558 dual op amp. Now here's a view of the board with the two new chips and the final 22 microfarad electrolytic capacitor installed. Take note again that the, the pin 1 is going down to the lower left or towards the potentiometers for adjusting the voltage here. With your op amps and final capacitor in place, solder them in. And it's not a bad idea to go over all the solder connections on this board. Here you have your finished board ready for assembly and after we're done with assembly it's time to adjust and calibrate. Place the power supply loosely back into the CS80 chassis. Connect your AC power switch which is this Molex connector. Actually it's the wiring that goes to the AC power switch. Do not attempt to power up the power supply at this time because you will damage it without hooking up these two jumper leads as you see here. We'll zoom in a little bit here. Closer, closer. The way it's set up is the lower right pin is your plus 15 volt output. The middle bottom pin is your minus 15 volt output. The upper pins, the ones above each of these lower pins, such as the middle pin, is, is your minus 15 cents input. The power supply has to be able to see the output voltage in order to calibrate itself correctly. The op amps we just replaced, for example, the inputs to two of the pins on one of those particular chips are actually connected to these two terminals here. This is the servo correction system that they use on the board, on the power supply board, to maintain a, a precise accurate voltage for the keyboard. So just taking a pair of small jumpers such as these from Radio Shack, you just connect the bottom terminal to the middle and then the lower right to the, to the one directly above it. 
Inserting the two jumpers in the Molex connector is exactly the same as connecting these two brown wires, this brown wire to this brown wire, the jumper lead, and the two yellow wires here and here together. These are going to the same set of respective pins on the output block, that Molex connector. The common for your plus and minus 15 volts is the upper right hand pin and right now the red probe is on the 15 volt output so we adjust the trimmer pot to get as close as we can to 15 volts. So now we're going to go to the minus 15 side. I put a little piece of paper between the two sets of terminals, the jumper leads so they don't short out. And the minus 15 volts, center potentiometer. Next is the adjustment for the positive 8.5 volts. The common is in the center left cavity of the Molex connector, and the actual positive 8.5 is the bottom left cavity. And by adjusting the right potentiometer, we should be able to bring in 8.5 volts. Next adjustment is the minus 6.5. Again, the common is the center left cavity of the Molex terminal. Upper left cavity of the Molex terminal is the minus 6.5 volt output. And second potentiometer from the right, facing the printed circuit board, is the adjustment for 6.5 in the negative. Last voltage to calibrate is the 10.6 volt positive. And again, the upper right hand cavity is the common for this voltage. And then the positive output is the center top cavity. And we are adjusting the left hand side potentiometer. Calibration is complete. After initial calibration, turn off the power supply and unplug the cord from the wall. Wait about one minute for all capacitors to discharge. Then go ahead and connect your main ground lead, your Molex connector, and go ahead and install the unit into the CS80 chassis. Assembly is simply reversal of the disassembly. Power up your CS80, wait for about 20, about 30 minutes, do one final recalibration of the power supply in the same order as before. This concludes the tutorial on how to rebuild a CS80 power supply.